thanks for joining us today. You know we're going to talk about smart e-forms, how to streamline your data capture, and save time processing your forms. My name is Nicole Schmeida. I'm the marketing specialist here at DocuWare, and I'll be moderating the polls and Q&A during the session today. Um, the main host is Justin Espinoza. He's a regional sales director here at DocuWare. Um, some fun facts about us both, just so you guys can get to know us on a little more personal level, um, Justin actually let me know he has three albums on Spotify. So you can see he puts those guitars and stickers behind him. Um, fun fact for me, I became an aunt this year, so that was exciting uh, as well. So for today's agenda, you know, the first, third, Justin will cover, you know, what is Doc Reforms and what are the benefits of this um, solution? Then we'll go into a live demo, uh, so you can see how it plays out in real time and get a feel for it. And then, like I said, we'll have Q&A at the end. Um, we, have, we do have a poll question for you, kind of. We want to kind of see, how are you capturing your data now? So I'm going to launch a poll question on your screen. Um, you should see it right about now. So how is your data capture going? Maybe you're only using paper forms now. It's kind of slow. It's not ideal. Fine for now using a mix of paper and PDFs. Uh, you're using a mix of PDF and digital forms, so it's it's pretty good. But maybe you wanna you wanna take to the next level and automate that. Uh, and other, feel free to type in your answer in the question box. So let's just wait a few seconds till we get um, a good amount of people voted. I see the votes coming in. Thank you. Um, if you haven't, just take a moment to select one of the options on your screen now, and then afterwards I'm gonna share the results so you can kind of see, um, you know, how's everyone doing with their forms and data management now. All right, uh, looks like we got a good amount, so I'm gonna close the poll now and share the results. So let's see. Um, Let's see, we um, have majority, you know, it's fine for now using a mix of paper and PDF forms. A lot of people are like, you know, it could be automated. So the reason you're here today is you wanna see like, how can you transform your data management? Maybe it's okay now for you, but what you'll see today will change your mind. You could see how you could save time um, and reduce some, you know, redundancy going on. Um, and we do have someone, you know, they, they do have Docker right now, but they wanna learn more about this Docker form solution. So. All right, great. Now with that, I'm going to pass it off to Justin. All right, thanks, Nicole. So today as we go through this, uh, I want you to think about how you're doing data collection, right? We live in an era where people typically under 40, I'm over that, don't get offended, uh, collect, want to do the things the easiest way, right? Because they grew up with a smart device in their hand. And so collecting data for your customers internally needs to be easy because it's something we can offer. So we tend to ask questions like how long does it take to collect that data, right? How long does it take to access the data? What happens with that when that, when that occurs? So what is the next step? Do I need to pass it on to another person in the organization? So all of these types of questions are what we're looking to answer because something as simple as having a e-form present can allow you to grow 20 to 30 percent without having to hire extra people to manage that data for you. So that's what we're really after today, right? Make things easy for us, our customers, and allow us to do more with the same amount of folks. And so when we ask users for improvements and what they're looking for, always increased efficiencies, right? Um, for me, mine is actually down at kind of towards the bottom, which is customer satisfaction. Again, I want it to be easy succinct, right, so they can get their information across to you, a new hire can get their information across to you, a customer, and it's very simple for them. But of course, all of these are fairly equal, right, all the way down to cost savings, and pretty much nobody says uh, we have no benefits showing from that. As you know with DocuWare, if you're kind of familiar with us, uh, we're all about the options. So we have cloud and premises solutions, but you can also access that from your mobile apps, right, iOS and Droid. It's a very unique solution out in the market today. It's simplistic, but also gives you so much power and flexibility. It truly is the thinnest and cleanest on the network today. So what is DocuWare Forms, right? 
Um, basically, it's gathering data and how do you gather data and how control what it is and how do you use that data. So I break this up into two things. The very first thing is just basic information gathering, right? And I think about things I do every day. I took my dog to the vet and I had to fill out a form. I go to a doctor's visit, fill out a form, take your car to the shop, right? To, to get your brakes replaced, fill out a form, being hired, you're filling out forms. So filling out all those forms just happens every day in every walk of space that we're doing, right? Site surveys, if in, you're into plumbing or construction. And then we go from there to filling out papers creates problems, so physical papers, right? So everything from, I have to store this in physical space, filing cabinets, um, privacy protection. So what happens to a document after you grab somebody's data and then you're passing it on to the next person? That's a big step. Um, then you come to things like missing data, uh, termination of documents or, or uh, document cycles, right? We're, we're gonna terminate that in five or seven years. Remote access of data. This past couple of years has been tough for a lot of people. So having the ability to get to anything, fill out a form on your phone, retrieve it from your phone, right? Do everything you can from remote is a big deal. And then process visibility. And this is key because in any process, we've all experienced this in our work lives, right? Where you share information and all of a sudden the approver doesn't approve it or it's in the back seat of your car on accident, right? So process visibility is key. <clears throat> then we have, today I'm actually gonna show you this. We have the ability to create these. So there's a lot of fear around this type of technology with folks, right, that are not IT related. IT people can uh, have fun with this type of thing. But if you're like me, you know, I need it to be streamlined and easy. So I'm gonna show you this um, live, so I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this one. And then again, just to reiterate, right, we wanna be flexible, always available, and completely mobile as well, in case you need it. In fact, in our mobile system, we are in Microsoft Azure, and they're top tier. So you could do this on LTE service. You don't even need to be uh, connected to Wi-Fi. And then here's the big key is when you have data come in, what happens to that, right? Is there a workflow in place, tasks built in, email notifications, um, so that you can always keep track and again, have that process visibility. What this creates is everyone saves time. And I can't reiterate this enough. Literally by a third, we can increase your efficiencies. Right, so that means you can outlive your competition, you're faster, better, and more streamlined. So where, does, where do people use this? Realistically, everywhere. So today I'm gonna to show you a couple of um, odd examples for you, but of course we do financial, right? HR, um, communications, operations, manufacturing. I have restaurants using this for order forms on takeout, like everything you can possibly think of, DocuWare users thrive on it. So let's take a look at this in action. Um, hopefully you're familiar with DocuWare, um, but this is DocuWare in and of itself. So let's kind of walk through this. Over on the right-hand side of the screen, I have a viewer pane. Um, I'm on one laptop right now, but you can separate this out. So if you needed to um, have this on dual monitors, triple monitors, you can see this information. Um, and then if you go across here at the top on the right, I'm sorry, on the left-hand side, you have a DocuWare tray. So my DocuWare tray has a document in it. Think of this like a wire basket on your desktop. You do something with it and move on. Then we have searches, right, which is the next thing. And these searches are tailorable to you. This is one type of search I have set up. Um, from there, you have lists and tasks. We'll come to that in a minute, that's workflow. And then of course, um, we do have the ability to folder structure if you need to. And of course, e-forms. Hey, so Jess, sorry, one second. Do you want to turn off your camera? I think you meant to do that earlier. Sure. Okay. So let's take a look at uh, the first e-form. And this is one just from experience, right, guys? I've been doing this, sadly enough, for almost 21 years. And uh, over that time, we see a lot of accounting because accounting is everywhere. Um, but in that accounting space, it's super simple to onboard a new vendor, right? Said nobody ever because they never give you the information you need. So you see there's things here with asterisks. And to save time, I kind of pre-filled some of this out, right? But 
everything with an asterisk has to be filled in or the form can't be submitted. So you see here, it's grayed out, I can't submit it. So realistically, I would need to come up here and then come in and bring in my form that they need. And now, and now they can upload this document, right? So if we go back to submit, now I can actually submit that e-form. So it makes it really simple to go in and gather that data and make sure we're gathering the right data so that we can find it easily, right? So if I come down to DocuWare now and search for that data, so all I did was put in a today search, hit go, and then you can see we captured the data across the top here of everything we needed. So now this could later um, be connected and sent out to another system, right? To one of your accounting systems, for example. But then in addition to that, we also put in where you have a PDF file here. So it's a nice thing to gather. So that makes it super simple for you to gather the data from the people uh, that you need data from. So let's go take a look at another form. And this is a little bit more outside the box thinking, right? Because there's so many tasks that we do every single day when you're looking at uh, your business. And one of the ones that I came across was a water company that literally installed water machines in your houses, right? Very large company actually. And so one of the things we can start doing is filling out the data on the e-form for them. They have a site survey. Hit the letter X, date pops in, right? And then we can do things like pre-detective uh, uh, text there. And of course, you can have drop-down menus if you need to, like your states. Um, notice this one here, though, because you don't want an e-form that just keeps rolling and rolling and rolling, right? So in this one, I put, if it hits the type of unit, then they can have a secondary uh, thing pop open. So you can do this to any of these, right? It makes it simple for somebody to be able to go in and fill out the information they need. Um, then, of course, the type, sizes, you can even go down, let's pick an install date, right? This was their site survey um, and how what they needed to happen internally, okay? So everything from the type of uh, pipe they were going to use to the length of the pipe, um, you know, whether they need a shed, what type of countertops did it have, who's the sales rep. We're gathering data that typically would be done on an e-form, right, or some sort of paper format. Um, so here we can click the image, and they're actually going to come in here and take a pictures of the house and where those need to be. And then, of course, you have your signature date. So today's a good date for that. And, of course, they can sign for it. Now, next month on the 23rd, I believe, hopefully, Nicole, if that's wrong, you can correct me. But on the 23rd, we're going to have a whole seminar about e uh, digital signature. And while DocuWare won't replace something like DocuSign, there are a lot of legal situations where we can. So maybe that will reduce your footprint. It's a simple signature here, right, that we're capturing. Site survey has been done, um, and we're good to move from there. So before I hit submit, I'm going to come here and do a search under the water company. And let's just change that search, right? Um, you're seeing I don't have anything filled out, so it's gonna try to find every document in the system, which there are none there. So as I come back to my data form, uh, I can hit submit, right? That's gonna take a second to go in because all of these things are live that I'm doing in front of you. So this is actually DocuWear Cloud and it's live presentation. And as I'm sitting here in this, folder, I'm just going to simply hit refresh. And now you see we have documents in there. And I'm actually using their real documents in here, guys. You can see they're not great documents, but I'm still capable of clicking on those and getting those to go away, right? All of the data is filled out exactly where we needed to put. Everything from check boxes, the type of pipe, right? Whether that was required to come in or not, um, all the way down to the digital signature down here at the bottom. So that's something very simple and easy to do with a task that was taking them a few days to get that back into the office, right? So that was taking so much time for them and cutting their cash flow cycle down because they couldn't get these in fast enough. Sometimes it would take them up to four or five days, but we don't want that to happen to a customer, right? We want them to be able to 
fill that site survey out while they're there. And then internally, we can start processing this within two minutes from them hitting submit. So, and you saw how fast it works here, right? This is a live system. So it's very simple to start moving and working with your documents from the field, cutting down that cash flow cycle. So with that said, I'm gonna move on to something actually more traditional, which is a new hire form. And if you're like me and you've been hired a few times in your life, um, again, I've been with DocuWare for about eight years, you'll know you fill out 35 to 50 documents, first name, last name, address, phone number, and it gets so long in the tooth and so difficult, right? But before I actually fill this guy out, I want to take you into that configurations piece. So here is, this is our actually our configurations piece. I'll go back to the homepage for you. You can see this is the entire way we set up DocuWare. It is all, uh, we call it GUI-based driven, right? Guided user interface. So if you can follow instructions fairly well, which is a challenge for me sometimes, um, you can do this yourself. So here's our e-forms. You can see I have a plethora of e-forms. And here's our new hire form. So I'm just gonna click the edit button on the new hire form. And you can see here's where I name it, new hire form, right? Um, but then down here is where we start getting into it. And this is how we build a form. So I said, hey, I need to put a picture right here of the DocuWare logo, right? I wanna make it blue. So I turn the little background blue when you see it on the screen. Um, I can come in here and change this, maybe from new hire form, I could change it to something like HR form, right? And go in there and make that change to it. I can add spacers and dates and drop down menus, radio buttons, pretty much anything I wanna do um, to a document to gather that information. It's extremely simple, guys. It's not something that's gonna uh, confuse you or get you uh, crazy, right? When you're trying to do it. And it's simple drag and drop. So let's say I wanted to bring a date field and put it somewhere right here by the signature so that when somebody signs, uh, there's a date of signature, right? So I can easily do that and then name it date of signature. And it's so simple to do. And once I'm through with that, all I need to do is hit save, okay? And that's gonna save it back to my form, super cool. But let's go on to the more pertinent side. So I showed you the first form was just data gathering. The second form was data gathering, but then merging onto a form. So there's your choice there. Data gathering only, it doesn't need to fill out paperwork in the background, or a merge form. And so in this case, it's a new hire packet, right? So we wanna do a, probably a bunch of merge forms. So that's what I clicked. And then of course you come in here and you upload the forms you want. So I have a W4 and I9 and emergency contact form. Let's edit one of those out. So when I edit it out, I'm simply saying, hey, this is where the first name goes. This is where the middle initial goes, last name, street address, right? Everything that you need to add there. How am I gonna output this guy? So it wants to live in the HR filing cabinet. I want it in a letter format. And this is how I want that data indexed once I get that. So it's super easy to merge those forms in. I can add a new one, bring it in, fill that one out, right? And it doesn't take a lot of time or effort. So, and I wanna show you guys this because I don't want you to feel like, oh, you know, I'm gonna have to call DocuWare. I'm gonna have to call my partner every single time that I need a new one done. No, you spend 20 minutes, you can do this yourself. And then of course you'll have more users than just one and you can pick who has access to what form. It's that simple guys. Um, super easy to do. I'm gonna go ahead and publish it so that the uh, changes take place out there. But that's the configuration side, right? So going back into our HR folder, um, I'll simply do the same thing. I'll do a search on everything we're storing today and it should pull back blank right? Because I haven't stored anything today. But now I have my e-form up. Um, and so my e-form, I just refreshed it so you can see the changes took place because I published that out. So I have this data field signature now, and I have my HR form instead of new hire form. You know, regardless of how you want to do that, it's up to you. But I can simply use that, right? I can have a drop down. Also, pre, uh, it determines the text as well. Right, you can add pretty much anything you want into there. We'll go ahead and add her middle initial. Um, and then just to be funny, right? It's a gender, 
intelligence level. I'll say she's pretty good at and a dog person. So whatever you need to do there, but in more serious fact, right? If I needed to have a copy of her driver's license, uh, social security card, whatever you need there. And of course she can come in here and add her lovely signature there. So here I just put a predetermined uh, text down there. So a lot of people can have um, uh, disclaimers there, you know, proof of signature, all that kind of stuff could be there as well. So now that we hit submit on that e-form, again, it's the merge form, right? So I fully want to come in and have this data um, be filled out. So you'll notice my task immediately went from two to three. So that's interesting. We'll come back to that red dot. Um, but you'll also notice that my paperwork's filled out. So here I have Laura T. Smith, right? She got filled out. We have signature box down here and all the data is in the correct places, or at least the places I told it to fill it out, right? And sadly enough, she has my personal email address. But then if you move on to emergency contact, right, all that information is also filled out. And of course, if we ask for the other, we would fill that out as well. So it makes it super simple. Now, if you're like me with new hires, um, I've seen this so many times where we hire somebody new, but we forget to tell IT they need a network drop and they need a laptop and they need a computer, <laughs> sorry, a, a phone and all of these things. So they get there the first day and it's like, uh oh, what do we do with them? So that's when we take this information and we have the ability to do other things with it, such as tasks, right? So this is a workflow task and I simply have it set up to mine anything I sent out or maybe I wanna monitor my team's tasks, right? So I can come in here and monitor that information and now give IT a message saying, hey, we have this many days, for example, to get this employee up before her start date. And we can also send out an email notification. So uh, this is a Gmail account, right? This also integrates directly with uh, Microsoft Outlook, 365 or Exchange but we'll work in Gmail too. So we can send out automated emails, which is awesome. So I'm pretending this is sent out to the IT staff, right? This is predetermined. So you guys didn't see me come in here and write up an email. And you can also look at the timestamp, right? That it was sent out, which is uh, live. So you know I didn't do this beforehand, but predetermined subject, predetermined text, based off of the options we picked for the new hire, this is what we need to set up. And then this can also be set up in a couple of ways, just a static email like I did here. It could also redirect them back to their workflow so that now the IT person gets this. And then once they complete that and they go ahead and confirm it, that the hiring manager or, and the HR person would also get that um, information directly back, right? perfect way to keep tabs on everything. You can look at the history for audit trails. This is a very new demo. So there's just one in progress, right? I can also reassign it if I need to um, set up reminder dates, which is really important. So say if I, if Nicole's my IT person and I had 15 days to do this on day 12, it will send her a reminder again that it's not done because we can see it's not done. On day 13, it'll send her and myself a reminder Well, I didn't do it either. So day 14, it goes to the head person and they get it done, right? It's a way to show a hierarchical chain in workflow so that nothing gets missed. And of course, you can see exactly to whom it's assigned. So it's perfect in that regard. You can't lose those documents. So furthermore on that, um, we have everything available via your mobile device. Right, so we have uh, your workflow. This is just the iOS store, folks, and it also works Android, of course. But you'll see here they have tasks, lists, searches. Looks just like DocuWare. They can pick what they want, use a stamp to sign for it if they need to, or pin it, or whatever that workflow step is. Or if you're a field employee, of course, based off security, you can uh, fill these things out. You can find them while you're in the field. You can even scan in information from the field if you need to from our web app. It's really cool um, and truly allows a mobile workforce. And the very last thing, I'm not gonna make you guys sit through another whole, hey, look at this fancy thing we can do, but this was just something quirky and funny because again, I want you guys to think outside of the box of what can be used 
as far as uh, gathering information. So this e-form was aimed at high school students that want to exhibit in a rodeo, right? They want to bring in their animals. So anything from uh, a steer to a lamb, right? What type of animal it was, the class, birth date. Um, notice we put their information here and they can even upload photos of that livestock. How cool is that, right? Just something as simple as helping a high school student uh, show their animal at the livestock show and rodeo. That's a very Texas thing, by the way. So we'll come back to the uh, PowerPoint presentation because I think we probably uh, passed most of the data that we needed to on. But realistically, what we're looking to do, guys, is replace that old paper in PDF forms, right? Static stuff that's very hard because we can do this in a very structured, easy way um, for your customers to fill out, for you guys to fill out, launching digital workflows, tying in with digital signatures and products like DocuSign or Validated ID, and then again, have complete mobile access. So from an eForum standpoint, if you need data and you need to be more efficient and work better and try to best your competition, there's no better way of doing it than gathering data quickly and doing something with it. So with that said, I'm gonna turn this over to Nicole again, and I appreciate you letting me bore you for the last 22 minutes, and we'll <laughs> take it from there. All right, thanks, Justin. Thanks for the, the highlights, appreciate that. So we do have another um, poll question for you all, which I'm gonna launch on the screen now. So you should see it now. So yeah, what what intrigued you, what excites you most about, you know, Docker reforms? You know, it's easy for everyone, um, anywhere, anytime form access. Now you might have people, some people in the office, some people at home, maybe some people on the road now, um, the merge form. So maybe you have a certain layout you need to adhere to, so you can still stick with that, but definitely streamline the data, gather, data gathering. Um, or, you know, just the fact that you can now keep, keep the flow going. You don't have to manually track down that person, email that person, or you know what else? Type it in the question box. <clears throat> All right, we look. We see some votes coming in now. Just wait for one few more seconds here. All right. All right, looks like we got a good amount um, coming in. So I'm going to close the poll now and share the results. And yeah, so definitely, um, you know, I think we can all agree that people are interested in all of these. You know, what's like the most is just like that automating of the processing of the forms. That seems to be the trickiest, I guess, because, you know, there are a lot of like digital form builders you can do yourself, but then it kind of gets stuck after the submission. Like, where do you go from there? And Docker just ties everything together, um, keeps your users in sync and the work just moving forward. So that's great. Um, we're going to hide the poll now. All right. Um, just to finish up a few slides. Uh, we have you know, a lot of security certifications, um, DocuWare, you know, is tested by third party um, sources to make sure, you know, everything, you know, we're, we recently uh, received our SOC2 Type 2 uh, certification that's upgraded from the Type 1. Um, we do have a lot of great software reviews on sites like G2 Crowd, Captera, where you can read a lot of great success stories there. And I'll set, I'll include that in a link to those in the follow-up email after the webinar today. Um, if we go to the next slide, we can actually see a quote from the case study in your handout. So this is a um, fitness camp. They, you know, before DocuWare, when they were taking on new, new um, clients, they had to collect, collect a lot of data because they're monitoring, you know, people's like health progress. So just manually collecting all of that and then, you know, trying to track down people who didn't fill it out or maybe they weren't comfortable giving information on paper. Um, now with DocuWare, they definitely, you know, streamline that. They don't have to spend $3,000 per, you know, a new customer event. Um, data is gathered uh, faster and they can reroute that money uh, to grow the business. So definitely take a look at that full case study. Um, that's that's great to hear. 
So I think we have one more slide here. Oh, yep. Yeah. So uh, Justin mentioned earlier, our next month's webinar will be on September 23rd on Docker for electronic signatures. So this is our um, secure signature solution um, for DocuWare, and you'll see the different um, features of that more in depth. What you saw today was just a simple signature uh, for DocuWare, but if you, you know, we definitely want to show you how secure and legal those can be using DocuWare. So you'll get an invitation for this, or you could just go to DocuWare.com. Um, you'll see it probably either the end of this week, early next week, and you'll see it on social media too if, if you follow us on LinkedIn. Um, and then, yeah, so then, you know, what's your next move after this webinar? We appreciate you joining us today. Um, you know, we hope you take the next step, move forward, talk to your authorized Docker partner or us and, you know, get going, get more information. How can DocuWare forms, what you saw today was just a taste, but how can, you know, how can it be applied to your personal uh, company's needs and processes? We hope you don't just, you know, stay static and, you know, keep doing what you're doing. You might, you know, be left behind your competition who is, you know, taking the move to go digital. So with that, um, let's open up for questions. And you can see on your screen here, you know, there's various ways to get in touch. Like I said before, reach out to your authorized Docker partner directly to get started. Um, you can also head to docuwarecom slash forms or email us anytime at contact.us at docuwarecom with any thoughts or questions. And we'll definitely uh, be in touch. So I'm um, actually going to turn our camera back on, Justin, if you want to. Turn yours on as well. Cool. All right. So let's kick off some questions here. Let me get the question box open. So we got some coming in. Um, we have a question. Does it have tie-ins for API connections? Yes, actually. DocuWare uh, can always send out a flat file, right, which is free, and you can upload that for free. Um, but then you also have the ability to uh, do an API connector. DocuWare is uh, one of the thinnest, cleanest products on the market, right? And of course, uh, we open seamless. We got other products if needed. Yep, definitely. If you need more information on that, definitely send us an email. Um, next question is, can you have fields with numeric calculations? So we do numeric calculations inside of the workflow. Um, we're actually trying to progress that in future iterations to have that inside the form itself, but currently it's done in workflow. Gotcha. Um, let's see. Uh, someone asked, can you save a new picture, a picture of a new employee, or I guess upload it to the form, and then can that picture be saved as its own document um, in DocuWare? You absolutely can do that. So. Um, the way I had it saved when they uploaded a picture was to put it on page two, uh, but you can have it saved as its own independent document as well. Oh, okay, cool. Um, for larger companies, can you attach fields to external databases to search a large number of options? We'll probably need to have a little bit more on that one. I'm going to say no at this point, um, but I know that's being worked on. All right. Yeah, definitely. Any, so we'll any, pen that and and we'll pen that question and answer it at a later time. Yes. If you need more info, um, definitely email us um, or reach out to your doctor partner. All forms need a workflow. Okay. So the next question is: Do all forms need a workflow on the back end? Do users that fill out a form need a doctor license? So there's two parts to that. Um, no, you don't need to include it in the workflow. So you can have the data gathering come and actually set up a task to send out a notification if you want and a notification to send out an email. So that's all can be done outside of workflow. Workflow just allows you to skip. Um, sorry, there's an echo. Workflow allows you to skip a lot of the data passing. So if you have a process that is uh, more automated in nature, right? Like I need to send something for Nicole to approve. I don't want to send it via email because now I lose chain of custody, right? So legality goes out the window. But I'm also clogging up the pipes on email with approximately eight different products if, or eight different files if I send it to her for approval, right? So 
So I'm choking down the network, losing legality, and that's why you want to tie it in, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. The second question was on, do I need a user license to fill out an e-form? And the answer is no. You can email these out to clients. You can put this e-form on your web page, house it on a tablet, and you don't need a user license to fill it out and submit. Got it. Um, I guess the second question would be, so can you make forms private with login information versus like a public, a public one? Absolutely. So with everything in DocuWare, um, when you look at the DocuWare interface, it's great because everything is an on off button. So you can really tailor it around yourself and your needs. And of course, security uh, is hand in hand with that. So absolutely. Oh, okay, great. Let's see. Um, next question is, can this system be integrated with an HRIS system, for example, like Bamboo HR? So going back to that API question, um, yeah, you can share data back and forth, as well as we can put things like uh, buttons inside of your HR program, right? So if you need to see an employee file, you click the button and the documents pop up for you. And we can also URL code those for hyper, blue hyperlinks inside of your HR system. So it really depends on how friendly is the other system, basically. Gotcha. All right, um, let's see. More questions coming in. We're hitting the 40 when minute customer, mark. Yep, when a customer fills out a form on the web, does Docker have a submit button or is that for the web page? developer to submit to a docker folder no just like on all of the uh forms that i had with the submit button down at the bottom once you hit submit it's going to route to the proper place in docker gotcha um somebody asks is this being recorded yes we will email you the recording after this webinar um will there be a feature to link a pdf excel file on the form to be downloaded by the form user Say that again. I guess they're asking, can you link, can you link to a PDF Excel file on the form so that the user filling it out can download that? That's an interesting question. I don't know if I can link a document to it. I'll have to test that out. Uh, I'm going to say no to begin with, but I'll test that out and find out. Yeah, I guess adding like a hyperlink. Hmm. Um, can you pre that we can definitely do a hyperlink? Okay, yeah. can you populate a form in a workflow? So you can have it internally with uh, fixed fields, and uh, you can do some predetermination inside of a field. Okay, gotcha. Oh, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, we're coming up on the ending mark here. So, again, if you have any more questions or specific info email us or contact your doctor or partner. Um, let's see, I guess one of the things. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Nicole. One of the things, just a reminder guys, is all the handouts are attached here on the side. Um, so don't forget you can download all of the documentation that Nicole has kindly put up there for us, including the PowerPoint and everything else. And then she'll send you out a recording as well. Yes. Um, I guess going back to that picture question, there's a, clarification needed. Can the picture saved as its own document be linked to a third party security check-in system? That we'd have to test. So we can save the image alone by itself, right? We can even export that image to something else. So that's kind of what I'm thinking you're going. So I would contact your DocuWare um, regional sales director and have them test that for you, or you can send it to me and I'll test it for you. Gotcha. All right, looks like we have three more questions um, and then we can, you know, wrap up here. So um, someone's asking, what about forms that need to be notarized? Is that work? So if, if you need a signature or you need a notary uh, to do something with it, if you have a notary internally, they have to do it in the present. So that would be kind of difficult on an e-form. If you need a signature, of course, um, a legal signature, we partner with DocuSign and Validated ID as well. Okay, yeah. Um, we do have that webinar on September 23rd coming up. Um, and 
Let's see, two more questions. If a form is sent via link, can anyone submit this form if they share the link or can only be submitted by the initial person? It depends how you set up security. Most people want it to be able to um, be shared out. It just depends on the situation. Most people want it to be able to, like a customer facing form, for example, that's always active. You can get off your website, you can forward it. But if you need to secure a form down, you can always add security around those forms. Gotcha. All right, last question. Can you add documents to the sent emails, such as HR, HR info for a new user, et cetera? You can attach a document, absolutely, from DocuWare. Cool. All right. Um, yeah, that looks like all the questions we have come in. So again, thank you all for your time. Um, can you know if you need more information definitely reach out to the three you know points on your screen you know we're here ready to you know talk to you your partners are ready to talk to you so take the next step um and you know thank you again for joining us thanks justin for that introductory demo you know let's see where we can take dac reforms uh in your company so thank you and I got, hope you guys have a great weekend and we'll see you on September 23rd. Thank so. you guys. All right, take care.